In this tutorial, we are going to be going over, well, we're going to make some improvements to our inventory just a little bit, as well as we are going to be setting ourselves up so when we die, all the items that are in our inventory, how previously they were, I don't know, maybe five feet above the ground at the actor's uh, the axis position, we're going to make it so they snap to the ground below them. So, for example, I cannot jump up on there yet. If I'm up here hanging off the edge and I die, actually I'll just show you. Oops, grab med kit and water. Alright, wrong thing. There we are. If I kill the guy up there, as you can see, the med kit and water are well above the ground. And if they were to happen to find a position off the edge, kind of like this right here, it would be a huge gap because it would still be at the same height on the z-axis. So what we're going to do to get around that is on each item that gets dropped here, we're going to be starting from this location, we're going to be doing the same location but down roughly 500 units or so on the z-axis and if that ray happens to make a hit with the ground then we will set our location to that impact point. So that'll be kind of where it'll make it so it'll, our object will snap to the ground. Only if it actually hits something though. And the improvement I wanted to make, so actually two of them. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do this at first, but I'm blind as a bat here we are. At the end here, after we've looped through and dropped all of our items in the inventory, we can go ahead and actually clear out that array. So it's items dot remove no empty. Don't need to pass in any parameters. So after all the items have been dropped, it empties out our inventory array. Now one thing we can also do here is we can set up a condition. So we don't really need this value to be replicated with all connected clients. We really only need the inventory to be replicated that array to be replicated between both the server and its owning client. So in our case, this would just be us. So we can go ahead and make a condition. So it should be condition. Then for the condition, it's condition underscore owner only. And that is not right, sorry. I actually have it up. No, it's literally condition spelled out. Alright, so now the our array here will only be replicated with ourselves. So now, what we can do is we can go ahead and try to find that impact point. So, first thing, we already know, actually I'll just start. So, get world, line, trace, single, and I'm going to use by object type. Now, first thing that you can see the parameter is, is an f hit result. So let's go ahead and make one. So, f hit result, hit result. So we're going to do out, hit, result. Next is going to be the start. So our starting position is going to be location. And we need to make an end location. So this is where the, uh, the end of the ray is going to be. So f vector end ray equals location. End ray dot z minus equals, we're going to do 500 units. So we have our end ray. Now the next one is f collision object query params. So f collision object query params. Should go ob j query. We're not going to do anything with that. So anyways, next being the f collision object. Yeah. Crap. What was it? F collision query params. F collision query params and collision params is what we'll call it. So collision params dot you see here we can ignore actors. So the line trace when we go straight down, it'll be something we don't want to hit. Now, for instance, if we're like let's say we get killed and that rate is going to be going into intersecting with our actor, our character that we control 
we don't want that impact point to be on that actor. We want it to be on whatever's below him because obviously, one, our actor is going to despawn. Two, it's going to be mid ragdoll. So it could still be in the air if it's getting the impact point before the player or the actor has already ragdolled all the way to the ground. So we're going to add ignore an actor, and it's going to be get owner. And I think that's the last parameter, which it is. All right. So if it hits anything, it's going to be put out and hit result. So now we simply do a check. So actually, let's also draw a debug line so we can see it. Uh, what do I have to include? Yeah, draw debug helpers. This is just so we can visually actually see the line. So draw debug line. So get world location and ray persistent lines false. Uh, yeah, three seconds should be enough. Death priority zero and thickness five. Uh, what? Oh, that's color. F color red. That was not red. <coughs> what was it? Oh, just red. It's doo -doo -doo. Yep, we're good. Wait, are we? After the color. All right, now we're good. So let's go ahead and build, and then we'll do our check. So when I'm going to have to play as the server here just to show you, but we should have a line coming straight down. So let's disable run dedicated server, so that way we have one of this client here as the server. So now when I kill him, there should be a red line going straight down from the med kit. And as you can see, there is. Oops. So that means we are good to go. We have our line going the way we want it. So now we check our hit result. So if hit result dot, uh, I forget what it's called, impact point does not equal f vector zero vector, because I think it should be zeroed out by default, then we want to move our location to that impact point. So location equals hit result dot impact point and build <coughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and test as a dedicated server again we won't be seeing that red line but that shouldn't matter so let's go ahead and grab medkit in the water and I'll hang about as far off the edge as I can and kill him Alrighty. And as you can see, our water bottle is on the ground up here, and our med kit had fallen over the side, so it's down here. So that is working as intended, and we are good to go on that. So this was a very quick one, so let's just go ahead and reiterate through it real quick. Where were we? We can actually remove our drawing of the line. That's not needed. So, okay, so now instead of replicating to everybody our inventory array, we're only going to be replicating to ourselves. So, because no one else needs to know what we have in our inventory as of yet, this may change in the future if we happen to make a feature that makes use of this. But I really kind of doubt it. So we only need it to replicate with ourselves. We don't need just to re-replicate it with every other client. Well, every client that's connected. So now, when we go to drop all of our inventory items when we die, we will loop through, and for each item, we call our drop item function. Now, this is going to get a starting location, which happens to be the location of the actor that just died, and we're going to get a random 
value for the x and y position based off of that. So it's going to be kind of like just anywhere in this little circle area that will be where the item ends up being. So since we're doing a line trace from that location, we need a location that is going to be from that location, but down, just straight down vertically. So we make an array f vector. So we're going to set that to be equal to our new location, as well as we're going to subtract 500 units off of the z-axis. So that should be like 500 centimeters or something like that. I think each unreal unit is a centimeter. So that way we're having a line going from the object, such as the medkit, and going straight down by 500 units. So if we, we also, while we're doing this line, we are going to be ignoring our own actor. So if the line intersects with our character, it's not going to, it's not going to matter. It's just going to ignore us if we're not there. That's what this is here at ignore actor. And that's why we did it. So if anything gets hit, it gets outputted into hit result. So here we check to make sure the hit result actually has an impact point that is not just a zeroed out vector. So that way, if that is the case, meaning it did intersect with something like the ground, we're going to set our location to be at that impact point. So if, let's say this did not hit anything, it did not intersect with anything, it, like it's off a cave, or like a, I don't know, just off a cliff, I guess. That's well over 500 units, so the hit, the line does not intersect with anything. Then location is going to stay above the ground where we can at least have a hope of accessing it. Then we simply, just like before, we set the actor location to that new location, whether or not that is the location of the hit point that the line found. It's just going to kind of vary based on your map and the situation, but it's pretty simple. Yeah, I will see you in the next one doing... I have... Yeah, I have no idea again. So hopefully you learned something.